So, uh, Max MSP exercises 5b, we've just looked at additive synthesis. Um, we might now start to look at some subtractive synthesis, or at least some means of subtractive, subtracting content from the signal um, by means of filters. Um, and so, uh, here's a filter, there are actually a variety of filters in, uh, in Max, but we'll just look at uh, this one for now. Um, it is a resonant filter, hence reson tilde, um, and it takes three arguments. The first one refers to, well, you can see, actually, it refers to the same as the inlets. So the first thing is the gain, which by default is num is on one, so um, as, as loud as whatever is coming into it. Um, center frequency is 200 hertz at the moment, and the Q, which is the width of what we might think of as a kind of bell curve, um, that kind of goes across the spectrum um, is at 23. Um, the higher the number of the Q, the more notch or, well, sorry, peak or notch like the filter, so the more specific the frequency content. The, the lower the number, um, uh, the wider the, the bell curve. So, um, uh, let's, let's hear something. We might You've probably been able to hear something the entire time I've been speaking, actually. Um, uh, I'll increase the center frequency so I can hear it. There we go, that's a bit better. Because I'm using rubbishy uh, speakers on my laptop, so I can't hear it. Anyway, 877 hertz now. And as you'll hear as I increase the, uh, well, as a, a low Q will give me much closer to a noise, the original noise. Um, and the higher I go the more pitched that becomes. Interestingly though, because we're dealing with a noise input, the uh, the, the sound has a kind of life to it. Um, it. It isn't like listening to a sign tone, which would be very, very consistent. This has a, a certain amount of um, uh, of life, if you like, to the sound, which you know might be more interesting for you to use than a sign tone. And in fact, you could, um, use subtractive synthesis to generate your timbres and then add them up in the same we did the same way we did for additive synthesis so that's another another kind of uh, way in which you might combine some of these uh, these sort of engines or some of these methods um, to, to generate a synth anyway <coughs> we could use uh, a keyboard to determine the center frequency um, and uh, and ha and have that change according to the di diatonic scale, um, and to do that we simply um, do well do very much what we did before. So I'll use a K slider, and use an M2F object to convert the values from a MIDI number to a frequency, and simply connect that to the center frequency input. Um, and then we could also use the keyboard to determine the, the gain, which is over here. And we'll use the same method as we did uh, in a previous example. We're going to divide by 127 so that we get a value from 0 to 1, depending on how hard we hit our key. Um, <coughs> so now, if I lock the patch, Uh, we have a, 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 a 261.62558, which you can't really hear, because again, because of my speakers. There you go, that's a bit better. Um, so now you can hear that it's, um, it, it's playing an appropriate pitch. But you may not necessarily want to use noise as an input. There's no reason why you should. You could, you could filter any input from the... Uh, well, from, from any source, really. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine this whole engine with something we've already worked on. So we can combine a series of oscillators instead of using a, a noise input. So I'll get rid of my noise. And I will... I'm going to actually... I've already got something open, so I'm just going to copy the, um, the oscillator z that I had in this patch which you've already seen 
copy them straight into here. So now we have, I'll just get rid of that. Better. So you will remember that within my oscillator sub patch, we have a sine to saw triangle and rectangle wave. Um, and that's being controlled by, via the selector object by the uh, U menu, which uh, will give me each of those um, wave types. And once again, that's being controlled by the M2F object. So um, I can run that into the uh, reson object. <coughs> And now we've got two keyboards going, which uh, may not be what we want, but we should now get, if I were to use a square wave input, for example, um, uh, I'm going to turn up the, vo the volume a little bit because we can't, can't really hear much. Oops. That's a bit better. Um, so now we have uh, a square wave which is being filtered. Um, oops, the patch again. Notice that the um, if I if I ch choose a different filter <coughs> um, pitch, um, then when it's the same as the input pitch from the um, square wave, uh, you hear it quite loudly. But it's obviously the the higher frequencies of the square wave are being uh, attenuated, so you get a much smoother uh, quality to the sound than you would if it was um, just a, a raw square wave. But if I choose a different pitch, then you hear a lot less, um, <clears throat> because the uh, filter center frequency of the filter is now shifted away from that uh, C pitch. If I were to go an octave above, um, you hear more of it, it's a little bit louder, but again you still only hear the, the, C, the, the C lower than that. If I go an octave below, still, still don't hear much. Um, which means, but basically what I'm saying with that is that if the, uh, the two keyboards aren't synchronized, so you are getting a, uh, you know, you're not getting a consistent timbre throughout the range of the keyboard. Um, if I were to, to, to leave the um, the filter frequency on the C, middle C, and change the oscillator frequency, we get a similar kind of thing. Um, so what we might want to do is to have the center frequency of the filter move at the same time as the uh, oscillator frequency. Um, <clears throat> so we will do that. Get rid of uh, the um, the filter frequency, uh, filter keyboard. I mean, Let's see how we're doing for time. Nearly out. And I'm going to replace that uh, again. Not not only that, but this is actually quite inelegant as well. Why would you have two keyboards to control the pitch of your uh, pitch of your sound? So I'm going to get rid of this keyboard. I'm going to get rid of this as well. In fact, I'm going to get rid of this. Get rid of all of that. So we just need we need a means of um, getting our uh, frequency from here to give us a similar or at least a consistent relationship between the pitch that's coming from our keyboard uh, for the, our oscillator keyboard to our filter uh, frequency. Um, and we can do that simply by adding a multiplication object. Actually, I need to zero point. and then connect that to uh, the center frequency. That's really all we need, um, except obviously we need to have a uh, something to control that. So now, whatever pitch we send from um, uh, to, to our oscillators is going to be multiplied by some value which we will choose, and that will determine the center frequency of the filter, which means that whichever pitch we have here, the relationship will be the same. 